This is Jason Ledecker. Jay is an automobile photographer and videographer, account executive, creator, and friend based in Los Angeles, California. I was lucky enough to go with him to South OC Cars and Coffee in San Clemente to learn about his process of how he captures cars and the community members that connect them. Everyone's just kind of yeah, hanging yeah. out. Yeah, Everyone's right. chill. All the while hearing about how different brands of cars carry with them different types of people, his theories on how less is more on social media, and other topics. Jay is one of the most upbeat guys I know who simply is just fun to be around and carries with him such a positive energy that is fueled by his passions for what he does. Make what you love and then have a conversation with people that make stuff that you like to. That makes me all the more stoked to share this conversation with Jay Schindledecker. Enjoy. So this is Jay. I met Jay in a unique circumstance. Where are we right now? So we're at South OC Cars and Coffee. It's the largest weekly car show in the world. They do it every week, and every week it's crazy. Sometimes there's so much overflow, it goes into a lot where we parked at. And you can pretty much come here and see any car that you would ever dream of seeing. Which yeah. I grew up in like small town, Northern California. I saw one supercar when I was up there, but if I had seen that when I grew up, I would have been like, like mind, mind blown. blown. Yeah. Here you see literally every car that you would ever dream. It's fun to, to go and shoot some cars and just hang out with people. and. Meet new friends. Yeah, so that's awesome. It's a cool community too around the the whole car thing, right? Yeah, you get everyone. Yeah, right. Like you get like old hot rodder dudes that just want to sit and like yeah. talk and hang out and talk about like where they found this part down to like the guy that's driving this Bowden out Auto House Huracan <laughs> with like every piece of carbon on it. We're gonna walk around and uh, we're gonna look at some cars. We're gonna shoot some cars too. Yeah, you got your setup and. Uh, Jay's gonna talk about his process, how he shoots different cars differently, yeah. and also just talking about his history and how he ended up here. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Let's do it. So back to the initial how we met story. Basically, we were flying a plane in to freaking Aspen, and the weather was awful, classic. I was going with my fiance, now. Now fiance, um, that's another story. was my girlfriend at the time, now my fiance, and there was a girl in front of you, was it? Yeah, it was in front yeah, of no, you. Yeah, no, she was behind me. Behind you. And she was not she having was a having good day. She was having such a rough time. Yeah. And puking and all that kind of stuff. And you were just super nice, like, here's my bag. <laughs> it's chill. Like, she was terrified. Be fine. She thought we were all going to die. <laughs> Which was honestly, like, I didn't think we were going to die. But when the pilot, like, we were probably 20 feet above the runway. And he just slammed on the gas. It was like rocket boosters, just like, <laughs> into the atmosphere. So. It was pretty, pretty Did you hear intense. when we were coming down, like, terrain, terrain, no, pull really? up. Yeah, so I could hear the whole way, and I was trying to keep everyone calm by, like, just not saying anything, right? Yeah. And I was like, fuck, man, this is really, really brutal. <laughs> right after that was right when I started, like, feeling sick. You're like, oh, and I'd shit. And I given my bag to that girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, no. Oh, no. But you were like hanging out, chill. You were like, hey, it's fine. Yeah, it'll be like, good. All right, if we get into some shit, this is guy yeah. that I need to go to. <laughs> so we kind of knew you were like up for anything, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you've flown in there before, it felt like, so. But then we woke up in Denver. Well, I yeah. woke up in Denver. And then we had kind of like been talking at that point. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what happened? He's like, we're in Denver. It's <laughs> <was> like, shit. <laughs> and we're not going to Aspen. And we're not basically. going to Aspen. And so the airplane, airplane, airline basically told us to screw off and to get our own ride to Aspen. We could wait for them to fix mechanical issues, which we found fix out. Fix mechanical issues. Was the, the wings were iced over, the windshield was iced over. It was basically not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Like anytime soon or at all. And so. I knew that because the first time I had gone to Aspen, the same thing, literally the same thing happened. And so I immediately, they're like, oh, well, you guys can wait. I'm like, I'm not waiting. I'm going to go <laughs> get a taxi. And then you guys were like, wait, you're not going to wait. We're like, have you, like, we were asking, like, because we felt like, all right, this guy's probably been up there before. <laughs> yeah. He's probably dealt with this before. We're like, hey, you know, like, is there a shuttle? Like, how do you usually get up if, you know, if you get stuck in Denver and you're like, oh yeah, you just take this like six shuttle that all the borders use yeah. and all the skiers use. We called them, there was no shuttles going Yeah, up. it was a shit show trying to get I a shuttle. I had to get up there because the next day I had planned on proposing to my girlfriend. Which I didn't know. Everything scheduled. I didn't, I went through this whole process not telling a single person. Yeah. So I was like, 
I gotta keep this a secret. Well, we have to get to Aspen. <laughs> One way or another, we have to get to Aspen. And we found a way which was like kind of expensive. Yeah, but, but it worked out. I was like, we're gonna make this happen. Yeah. We got this sick Russian dude in a Cadillac Escalade. And he just freaking powered us just all the way. Tires. It was great. But and, uh, yeah, the he funny was like thing. Siberian, so yeah. he's like, oh no, no, no problem. <laughs> My girlfriend slash now fiance was like, you know, at what point do you like give up and like stop? And I knew we were well, getting the answer. Like, around. What, what do you mean stop? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh my gosh. So, but uh, the funny thing about the whole story was that you were obviously knew what was happening. And then I had no idea that they were gonna get engaged or anything. So I was just like, oh, this is like a cool couple. And then he, you were probably stressed. I was losing the my whole mind. time. Yeah. yeah, I was losing my mind. I was like, we have to. But get you were there. really cool. <laughs> I was I, like, like props to you. Good time yeah. With, like, I don't know. You can like, there's a lot of situations where like, for example, like I'm a car guy, so I used to like drive modified cars. Yeah. You'd be on like a road trip, your car like breaks down, blows something. You can have a good time with it, right? Like there's so many scenarios where you know, like shit happens and you could just like choose to accept it and be like, actually, this is like a great opportunity to like work on my car on the yeah. side of the road. <laughs> like, you can kind of look at it in two ways. That was one of those scenarios where it's like, you know what? Like we'll find a way, there's always a way, but like we can have a good time, hang out with this guy we just met on an airplane yeah. and, and and really just take, take it for like a positive. And uh, I mean, man, that was one of those things where like 30 years in, uh, from now, we're gonna talk about like, Hey, remember that when we crazy got engaged car ride. in Aspen? Yeah. And every time we go up there now, we're gonna be like, we'll fly into Denver and take that route we took. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. That was just a fun thing because like my whole thing with this is like start a conversation, save the world. And just like talking to random people to like make cool experiences. And that's exactly what happened. Like yep. we just met on a plane and then we ended up going in a car for four hours and talking the whole time. And I learned so much about you two. And then like the next day I look on Instagram and you had proposed you. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Cause they were like, we, you'd been dating for 10 years, 10 right? Years. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. That's like pretty interesting. But then it just happened to be the next day that they, that yeah. you proposed. So it was, I mean, I was glad that like Nut you story. were up for whatever. Yeah, dude, for like, sure. I was like, man, we got to figure this out. I, I, yeah, I had it planned down to a T. Yeah, and it was perfect. Snow globe proposal, the snow coming Hell down. Yeah. We we're like in the mountains. It was, it was sick. It was so. sick. So, what do you do? So, uh, for a living, I do advertising. So, advertising and analytics in the car industry. Okay. So, for car companies. For for car small businesses, right? Okay. So dealerships. Um, the company that I work with does advertising for manufacturers okay. as well, but I more work with like small businesses, right? So um, my clients are generally like in small towns, they're not like in cities. So it's really cool like seeing what everyone's doing in, in different ways and trying to you know, reach customers through yeah. social media, through other types of advertising. But that's like my background, I guess, my day job. Um, but it's really cool just talking to people about like what they're doing with creating content. Some, yeah. Some of the dealerships are like in towns of like 4,000 people, but they're like having so much fun with it. Where like literally everyone in their town like knows who they are on a personal level, right? So it's, it's that's pretty cool. Um, and then on the side, I've been doing photography for years. I've just never really gotten to the point where, you know, it's like I have a professional camera that I can go out and shoot like the type of content that I'm like, ins you know, inspired to make, right? Until a couple years ago, I saved up, uh, you know, as much money, scrapped together yeah, money dude. as long as I could. Setups are expensive. Bought a camera, a rig, expensive lenses, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then recently I got a computer where I can actually sit down and like put together a full edit and come out on the other side and be like, holy shit, yeah, that's stoked. awesome. It's funny how uh, a lot of people think it's just the camera. It's so many things. And if you don't have a good computer to handle all the footage, you're going to be sitting and rendering and watching Skippy footage forever. Yep. And it's so frustrating because you just want to like be able to do, you want to be able to make things where the stuff, your end product looks the way you want it to. And it mm -hmm. takes a lot to kind of get there. Yeah. Especially if like, I don't know if you're posting like on YouTube or social media when you're starting out, it starts as like, you just want to make stuff that's sick. Yeah. So you can look at it and be like, dude, I did that. Yeah. That's so tight. There was a, I did a video a couple of days ago at a winery and um, my fiance and her friend and I went out there. It was actually like a, 
It was cool. It was like a marketing stunt. Yeah. They gave out two jobs, ten thousand dollars a month, and wow. you get to live there. And we got to go out there like a week before they moved in. So I was like, I just want to shoot some video. Yeah. And some photos, and then like look back on that and be like, that was so tight. But when you're running like a 2017 MacBook Pro with no graphics card, <laughs> it's just like skip, skip, skip. And then, you know, and then the, the chip goes out. Like, yeah. I had that happen three times. Really? Where I'm just, you know, it's like you're trying to put good color in and you're trying to make all these like really precisely timed edits, slow down speed, all, you know, add graphics. And then eventually the computer just gives out on you and you're just like, oh man, I can't create what I want to create. Yeah. And for me, I, I'm really inspired by like, I don't, do you know Art of Flight? Yeah. So like just that epic, that epic footage. Red Bull movie. Just, absolutely beautiful yeah right that's the type of stuff i want to create i kind of grew up with like that top gear right like professionally created content for like movies feature films tv shows that are just top of the line yeah and i've always wanted to create something like that right where you look at it and you're like wow that's gorgeous yeah <laughs> and, and it's a lot of fun right like you want to have that combination but when you don't have the hundred things that you need in order to do that, it, it becomes kind of tough. So I'm yeah. finally getting to that point. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, it's nice when you get to a point where you actually, because it took me forever too. It's not just about the gear, but also figuring out your process where you get to a point where the, the stuff that you create looks the way you want it to. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I wish it could have looked like that or I wish it could have done that or I shot it that way. It's like you look at the shot and you're stoked about like what you got. Yeah. That's like a huge, huge milestone in like creating stuff and just being a creative person in general is actually enjoying what you make. It's also when you can enjoy what you make and you're like really into like for me, I love wineries, right? Yeah. I love cars. There's certain things that I really like and you want to be able to like represent the, the I don't know, the passion that you have for that, right? You're kind of telling your own like mental story. Um, when you're able to create that, it's like, I don't know, it just makes you feel good about it. But when you're not able to, you're like, oh, this is brutal. <laughs> so, um, so or I you go shoot that. and then you think that you got something sick and then you make a mistake. Yep. And then that just You pull away like, like a millisecond too early. Yeah. And you're like, you're looking at it, you're like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Making those, well, then that, that's all part of like the learning process. You learn, yeah. And then you just get better and better, which feels good too. And with like what I do for a living, like understanding how, right, like that stuff, that process works, right? Understanding like where you can make mistakes, learn from them. It helps me in my job a lot, right? And a lot of times you think like, oh, you know, people are just sitting there on Instagram having, you know, a good time. Yeah. Watching stuff, just, scrolling down hitting the like button when really like you have to learn from it you have to keep learning i feel like i don't know you look at like certain uh like trends right and then it kind of like dies out people learn new stuff and you just have to keep going through that process yeah you know over and over then, again yeah oh, just constantly and it destroys you it really does but it, re it it destroys you but then you you're rebuilt as a better creator yep yeah absolutely yeah. Well, should we go look around at yeah. some cars and talk in, a bit about your process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I got my skateboard uh, taken boat. away. <laughs> so I brought a skateboard. Um, Just to get the moving shots? Yeah, moving shots. And especially in like automotive, it kind of, I don't know, if, you, if you've ever walked out to your car that you love and you're just like, ah, that's my car, right? <laughs> you're not in your head that's bouncing car, right? up and down, yeah. right? The idea I always have is... And I'm, I'm a little, everyone has their own style, yeah. right? But I always try to make something that reminds you of like that. When you're looking at your own car and be like, oh man, like. That's kick ass. I'm gonna go hop in, go for a drive. Yeah. Um, I always try to focus on that versus like being like hyper edited and you know, a whole bunch of crazy cuts, that kind of thing. Even if, you know, I don't have my skateboard, I'm always, I mean, I spend a lot of time, if I'm videoing, it's just, pretend this is on just taking these tiny little small steps which a lot of people know <laughs> uh, and just trying to keep everything as steady as possible um, try to get it you know small details of a car right like uh, like this uh, let's see this Brabus AMG is a good example right they have all these tiny little small details 
when you are the owner of this car, there's a lot of things on this car that are different than like the standard car. So you'd want to capture that as much as possible. Um, I don't know whether this is a real Brabus or not. I'm going to be honest. Are there um, fake and real versions of like modified cars? Um, there's, there's a DIY version, right? Where you just duct tape so the logo on there and call it a The day. greatest example is the three series converted to an M3. Okay. Right? Um, because if you're an enthusiast, you can instantly tell that's a three series converted to an M3 because the little side markers are not M3 side markers, right? BMW, so, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> for so, the, for the, for the people that don't know anything about cars, which is like, including me, I don't know a lot about cars. So if you, if you're driving on the road and you're like, oh, it's a cool M3 and you see the little side marker, this is specifically like the nineties M3s. You can, you can tell if you know the difference. I don't know on this one. I don't know. I don't know Mercedes as well. Um, but you'd want to get the small details on like, this isn't standard, right? The front, the front isn't standard. This is standard, but like the big grab is front. So you'd want to do something like, just a little something simple, maybe give it another run, make sure it's smooth. So this is one of those things is I don't know hundred percent whether that shot's smooth until I get it back in the computer. So I'm going to do it like two or three times because I've learned redundancy, right? You try to exactly redundancy. You, you learn over time, like, Oh, that's going to be a sick shot. And then you had this little creak in your left foot and it sh shook the camera that you can't go back and post processing and go, Oh, I'm going to smooth that out. It gives the little, the little jitters, right? And you're like, okay, that just fix it ruined. in post, right? <laughs> Some things you can't always fix in post. Yeah, so. unfortunately. How often do people like fake get fake cars and fake stuff to? And what's the purpose? Is it to make themselves feel like cooler, or or like what's the not, idea? Not, I mean, at I that point, hate, I don't hate on it. At okay, all. okay, uh, like. I, I made a couple statements like fake M3, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But like at the same time, it's like, it's just people, people go, Hey, you know what? I like that, that look, I like the car, right? I want to have that, but I don't, I don't have, have 50 $40, grand. To... So I totally understand. And like, I will generally like when I modified cars, I'll find stuff that like, I just like the look of. Yeah. So if they're going to offer me a real carbon fiber, you know kit for a couple thousand dollars instead of 30 and i don't want the performance modifications then sure i can have that and yeah. be happy so really at the end of the day it's like anything else you just customize it the way you like it and you enjoy it and then you know if someone else likes it and they buy it from you in the end so yeah <laughs> it's it's uh i don't hate it on it at all within any community right like there's that like guy who has all the nicest stuff and he wants everyone to look at me that. look at me yeah but then on the other side of it there's so many cool people that just enjoy it yeah and so which is so cool it's like every kind of community is like that um, so you just kind of take the good with the bad and you just you just find the people that you know that are really cool and yeah. you just hang out with them so people that are passionate about the, the cars and stuff yeah I mean like I know some guys that have some really flashy cars like camo you know wrapped cars yeah. with like wheels and all that kind of stuff and you just kind of like at first you kind of assume okay let's go this way okay you just kind of assume that they're going? a certain way we're just walking around yeah. this way you just assume that they're a certain way and then like come to find out they're like the chillest dudes on the planet yeah they just like enjoy they it it's like camo yeah they just like, <laughs> like hey Actually, I have a company that like is like the logo is like these colors. And so I thought yeah. it was like a cool thing. I love, you know, I love the look. And so I drive it around. It's good advertising for my business. But like, other than that, I'm just enjoying my car. Yeah. Right? Like, um, and I feel like that's what it comes down. Like, who cares? Yeah. If, if you enjoy it and it like makes you happy, like screw what other people think. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's kind of leading into how I got into car. Like I've always, always been into cars. Yeah. Um, just from like youth like oh my goodness um, I guess the backstory my my dad my mom and dad were both like kind of into cars my dad um, was stationed in Europe um, so he's in the military the 90s, yeah okay and uh, so he liked like rally cars and F1 and that kind of stuff and he would watch it I just thought it was really cool and then 
my buddy David took me to a race at Sonoma Raceway. Okay. Um, when I was like in high school, I had never been to like a real race before. We used to go like dirt track races. Like. Oh yeah, those are awesome. In, like, they have those the in sticks, Montana, right? Like yeah. they're so <laughs> sick, like the sprint car races. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I always just loved that. But when I got to uh, like a real racetrack and like experienced like full you know, spec Audi, uh, like the old R8 race car was actually yeah. like the first, that was the first real race that I saw was one of the first years that Audi came out with their Le Mans Moon car. And they came out to Sonoma and I was just like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're so fast. And what, so the speed appealed to you, the looks of the cars, like what was the thing that just, kind of internally you were like, oh, that's like freaking like, sick. Uh, it was just, it was just fun. It was fun being around it, you know, like hanging out with your buddies, um, watching the race, being outside for most of the day out yeah. in the sun, and just they're out, loud, in, out they're in the fast. clouds. So it's like just kind of the combination of like you're chilling, having a good time, and loud, fast race cars at the same time. Yeah, um, it was just a I don't know. It's a good combination for me. Yeah, um, and I just always enjoyed it. From there, I'd say like just enjoying driving like i've had my wide variety of cars yeah <laughs> right um going from like my first car was a uh, just like a beater gmc sonoma truck four cylinder yeah literally topped out at 91 miles per hour classic and it would just bang off the limiter at 91 <laughs> so you could just sit there and go 91 on the five yeah and just be banging off the limiter <laughs> right so for hours um so just enjoyed I mean and that truck was probably a great idea and a very poor idea at the same time it was slow it only had two seats I have a twin brother so those two seats were taken right there you go but it's also a rear wheel drive truck with zero traction in the back right there's no weight on the bed so anytime it rained it was a drift machine <laughs> <laughs> no, drifting just, the truck in second gear you could just Give it a couple revs, drop the clutch, and you're drifting. Yeah. Right? So, as a first car, it's probably the, the most fun car to just like learn basic car control and, and just enjoy it without going a million miles per hour. Yeah. So, I actually give a lot of credit to that truck for like getting me into cars just because it was so much fun. Yeah. And you can go and do a lot of things that, like, you know, it's like if you see a lot of these really fast cars out on the track, they, for the most part won't even be doing that kind of stuff because they're going at such a speed that it's a high risk for them okay so you can enjoy it because you're going really fast but you can't like really enjoy the process of like because you don't want to car. mess up your really nice car because you don't want to smash your nice car and yeah. a wallet on it <laughs> <laughs> so i got to do a lot of things just really when you're first starting to like drive that kind of leads you into like enjoying motorsports a little bit more because you know like what's going on you can yeah. just see what's happening um and so just kept developing you know did your development of like love for cars mostly come from the driving of them or the viewing experience because now at least externally you're capturing cars yeah. more than you're driving Koenigseggs or am I wrong <laughs> That's yeah correct so yeah did, was that the same at first or did that kind of change over time or would you prefer to drive now but you shoot because of whatever or how did that kind of turn out when so when I was a when I was a kid the other thing that my dad did was we would go out and just basically go out for a drive yeah and he'd bring his old film camera and we would like literally do nothing for like five hours yeah we would, we would just drive out somewhere you take a couple pictures and then we'd go to another spot take a couple pictures and then drive home yeah so I always kind of was around cameras. My brother's actually a professional uh, photographer in the wine industry. Okay. Right, so he does like, you know, work with big wineries. And uh, so we just like both always enjoyed the camera part of it. When I moved down to LA. From the, where? From Sonoma? So from Sonoma County, yeah. Okay. When I moved down from LA, like the first thing I realized was like an old, 80s BMW with no air conditioning is not a good idea. Yeah. You're just going to sit on Highway 10 and drive from your house to work <laughs> and then back. I Love was working that. from, you know, it's like I'd leave the house at 6.30 and I'd get back at like 9, 10 o'clock at night. Wow. You're not enjoying your car. Like, it, 
that doesn't. You're suffering. Yeah. So in the heat. It's love it's LA not traffic fun. with so, no air conditioning. I wasn't able to go out because I just wasn't able to go out to a lot of these types of events. So the first thing I did was I bought a commuter car. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. And then, uh, and then I was like, man, I'm really not getting to enjoy like I'm, I'm selling cars, right? Yeah. But I'm not really getting to like enjoy them, right? I'm not not able to go out and like have a good time. So, with like kind of the the background and childhood that I had with like cameras and filming, I was like, hey, you know what? I'll go out to these events on like weekends, and I'll just I'll take some pictures and have a good time and meet up with people in the car community and and you know see see what I can learn, right? Yeah. That's rose. So that's where like starting to to film and uh do photography and the car and you know in cars i guess um kind of all came together um actually it goes way back yeah it goes the the whole filming thing i got a great story for you my first filming experience and and it kind of goes back to like what you're using to like capture and edit my first like edited film that we tried to do was like when we were in like second grade we were like skateboarder kids yeah. right like we were trying so hard to be good but we weren't <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds pretty typical we just figured like you know it's like sometimes you're not like the pro right like you i remember i was listening to one of your podcasts where it's like you know you're not like good enough to like go up and compete you get like destroyed by like some kid yeah. that's like up and coming yeah and like what am i doing like, what am i doing in my life i like my cousin had like this sponsorship through thrasher as a kid I, we were just like not like that yeah like, i'm not like naturally gifted at like extreme sports or yeah. anything like that I, but i go out and i have fun and i enjoy it hey that's what matters so we figured like hey you know what all these like six skating videos keep coming out like let's just do that yeah like, let's have fun with it and uh all we had was a camcorder with like tape, right? So we would, we literally made like manual edits. Yeah. We went in. Like cut in. We'd like do a jump and then we'd go run inside if it was good. Yeah. We'd go run inside and we would capture it on one of like the tapes on a VCR. We'd capture it, end it, like scroll back to right where it ends. Yeah. And then we'd go back outside and do more clips. Wow. So we created a little skating video. <laughs> literally through the fast forward stop yeah and then pull it out and then put put it back in the camera so it made a little skating uh, video that way so it, like I'd been doing like <laughs> just like I had the passion to do it for like a really long time mm -hmm. and then having like that background in the car industry having the background just like enjoying cars in general when I moved down here I was like you know like that'd be so much fun yeah. to just go out and do kind of like that when you're a kid you're going out and you're filming stuff and you're yeah. having a good time so it all kind of like lined up yeah it lined up where perfectly. your different passions kind of came together into what you do I, now yeah I, I yeah think, and there's a lot of people like going back to like the modification thing right like these cars right I can't I can't like I can't do that <laughs> like, I can't afford a 720s a rs like an Aventador with a wrap, like I can't, but I could still enjoy them, right? I can still go out, you know, take some video, take some photos of them where I'm like, hey, you know what? I feel like I got to enjoy that car for the day. So I, I'm loving it. I, I have so much fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah. So Ooh, what? Heavy. I can hold it. <laughs> no. What, um, dude, yeah, that, you, that, you just got to go to the gym and then just curl your camera set up. <laughs> Get it going, yeah. Hammer but, curls. But, um, so where did you, so you kind of got to the point where you were like, okay, I want to combine my passions. Yeah. And you're working at an Audi dealership. So where did you start as far as like taking actual photos and videos and stuff? It's Was it with a phone? Was it with... Like what, how did you start? Yeah. Because you did the skateboarding thing, but then more specifically, I guess, with cars. Yeah. How did that kind of start out? So when it, it really started when I, well, with the cameras, I mean, I started with like a, you know, your phone cameras, just like uploading it to Facebook, right? Every time I'd get a new car, I'd go out and take photos of yeah. it at the beach, like that kind of thing on my phone. Then I got like a really basic like Canon SL1. Okay. Battery lasted about 20, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah. You get like a few shots out of it and then go home. Um, 
so I, I kind of started making my way up there. Um, and then I started working at a car dealership when I was 21 years old. So the Audi dealership? It, so I worked at Toyota okay. um, initially. And I, for a long time, had like dream when the FRS slash BRZ came out. Yeah. I'd watch like the whole development of that project. And I was really? Like, I'm going to get one. I was working at Applebee's, right? Yeah. I was like, I'm going to get one of those. Everybody's <laughs> like, no, you're not. You're a host at Applebee's, right? <laughs> like, I'm going to get one of those. Yeah. Um, I started working, um, so I was like, worked at Applebee's, worked at like a timeshare. I was like the check-in dude. Yeah. And then um, doing what you needed to I, yeah you just you know sometimes it's not always like you working at what you're passionate about it is now yeah um, but yeah I did a lot of jobs ended up at a car dealership at 21 selling cars and it just kind of naturally progressed I set goals and then I ended up getting the FRS like four months after working there wow it had just come out four months so I got like one of the first hundred in NorCal yeah basically um, and then through that, just enjoying cars, taking pictures on my cell phone, taking pictures on my little old DSLR yeah. with a tiny little, you know, like um, tiny little kit lens on it. Um, just kind of made my way into that community of people that were getting that that car. Um, but it was that community, though. It was that. It was finding the community. It was yeah. It you end up meeting with people like, you know, we go drive from. I lived in Sonoma County. We'd go drive. One time we drove up to Reno for a Scion event. Yeah. And it was like a whole bunch of us on the highway for a few hours. And we got up there. They had drift cars up there. And you're just hanging out with people that you've been talking to on the internet and yeah. sharing photos with. Here we are. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just, you know, through the communities and through like you know, the next car I got was an M3, right? Like an older M3. Yeah. And, uh, you know, same thing. You go into the forums, you're sharing pictures, you're doing modifications, That's taking so, more pictures. Yeah, it's so interesting because I guess I never thought about buying a car and like the type of car or whatever. You're choosing the community that you want to be involved yes. in. Yes. And the different types of people that would tend to buy a certain car. Yep. Like a, someone that's going to buy a BMW probably has different personality traits than someone who's going to buy uh, a Volkswagen Bug. Yeah, or something. I don't know. That's a bad example, but it's just <laughs> no, it's, it's, a it's good example, actually. or like yeah, it's it's a it's a good example. Like with FRSs, I you know I found like a lot of dudes that would like like to just go get like a smoothie at like ten <laughs> o'clock, <laughs> like like the latest pl yeah. you know, the place that was open latest. They just go get smoothies, and then you know like a lot of them were like computer programmers or like gamers that kind of stuff. When I got into the M3s, it was a different crowd, and yeah, and you know there was another level of like kind of i guess uh attention to detail on, on the bmws on the bmws just because like mechanically there's only certain things you can do yeah that are different than with the frs so it's just like a there's kind of a different vibe within each community and you meet new people along the way and you know there's good and bad in each one right? yeah like just like you know like with supercars we were talking about earlier um same with like there's, you know, if you were to get like a Mopar product, right? Like a Dodge product, SRT, right? That is a totally different community um, than like the tuner community, right? Yeah. Um, there's a, a totally different vibe. They do different things. They, you know, Mopar, they'll go out to the drag strip, right? Yeah. They hang out at the drag strip and, you know, chill there for the day. Whereas, you know, like a tuner meet, they'll meet up at like 1030 at night yeah. in a parking lot somewhere <laughs> and have a bite to eat. Do so, donuts. Yeah, do donuts or they'll go, you know, drive the canyons. Um, BMW communities, very different, especially in LA. Yeah. They're canyon carvers. They just go up to the canyons. Canyon they, carvers. So they'll go up at, you know, like six in the morning, 730 in the morning um, on like a Sunday and go drive from, you know, like uh, the valley all the way out to like San Bernardino County just through canyons. Wow. Right. So they'll go on 200 mile trips, just driving, driving back roads. Yeah. So, um, totally different than like, if you were to, again, like a good example is like Dodges, right? They'll do some Canyon trips, but you know, a lot of, it's a different type of car, right? Yeah. So you're kind of, you're enjoying different types of things. So that's nuts. Yeah. Wow. So where did you, that's like something that I had totally had no concept of before this. And I think that's, that was just a cool moment because 
right. that's why I kind of like I, I like doing this is because yeah. that is something I had no clue about and I never thought about is like how the different like different cars have different handling so that would correspond to different like types of trips that you do and drives that you do which is the different types of communities that you're eventually involved in which caters to the personality of the people in the community Absolutely. it's funny how like you could get the specs of a car and tell what kind of person is gonna like use it based on like what it's best at right exactly that's you're just, nuts you're enjoying the strengths of whatever you're you're buying into yeah right? um, I, mean, I guess the same thing is like um, like the communities I guess in like I don't know if you know like surfing or skiing there's different types of like skiing right yeah there, and every single one I don't know if it's a good example but like backcountry skiers versus like oh that's a great the, example the, the guys that go and just do pipes all day yeah right? like they have a different vibe to them they you know they go do different stuff there's obviously guys that like cross over yeah but and I guess in like longboarders versus like big wave surfers versus like there's just kind of a different vibe there's totally different there. vibes yeah um big wave would be like super intense right like, yeah there's like an intensity about it where it's one like, is just riding the wave versus like a small wave with doing tricks and stuff is more of the technical right but yeah i guess i never thought about the different disciplines of cars having like those different things but uh so where did you find where did you find yourself? What brand of car, what type of car, what community do you feel like caters best to who you are? Um, honestly, it kind of depends on like what hobbies outside of cars that you're interested in, yeah. right? Like for me right now, I'm doing a lot of road trips. So I'm like, hey, you know, like the SUV, like uh, the, you know, like SUV back road, like, a whole bunch of stuff on top of the car like yeah. right now that caters best to me right yeah. well what car do you have or what? so i have a um i have a range rover velar okay. which is like kind of in it, it's like a weird combination between like being a range rover and being like a city car okay right? um it's not like an off-road or anything like that but just last week i went off-roading dirt you know in the dirt to go uh in the this, range rover in the range rover to go yeah. out to that property right so you know you can still get that kind of stuff done um but i'd say like if i'm looking at like a like a br like a brand or type of car that i like fit really well within it's like porsches Ooh. right so mechanical it, like yeah. good engineering like and well built i've been hanging out with some of like the guys that drive air-cooled porsches yeah um, for a while since i've been out, down here in la and there's like kind of a variety within it Whereas like some guys are very like old school, they want like everything original, that kind of thing. And then there's some guys within that community that are like, hey, I'm gonna modify it. Like I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm turn gonna this tune this shit out of it. Yeah. Different, right? So you get that good range within that community. But at the end of the day, like when they go meet up, they're just like, they're enjoying it, yeah. right? There's no judgment. Like even with the old school guys, they're like, hey, that's pretty sick. Like, what did you do? Is yeah. that like a three? And they know so much, even if it's like a tuned car, they know so much about that car because they're, you know, they've invested a lot of time and, um, and passion into it that they're like, oh, actually, <laughs> I kind of know what that is. Like, yeah. and, and they'll dig in and have a good time with it. So. so there's less judgment in that community than you found in other communities based I'd on like the way that you tune certain cars. I think so. Because like Ferraris, I've heard at least that if you like, like, I don't know if that is specific to Ferrari, and maybe I'm just making this up, but isn't it like, you're not supposed to touch it. It's like built the way it's supposed to be and then like changing it. Like even the company doesn't yeah. back people who like modify their cars so because- that's, Yeah, that's the big dig on Ferrari. Um, although like, I know a few people within that community that like love to modify cars. Yeah. Um, and. Like one of the guys I met, unfortunately I didn't really like get to hang out with him that much. Uh, his name's Steve. He's got one that's like bagged, pink, like pink and white wrap. Pink Every, and white, there's yeah. There's a few actually um, like around here where, you know, people heavily modify. It's just like Ferrari as a brand is like, Ferrari's good enough. You don't need to, and that was kind of, as a brand from the beginning, Ferrari was, the whole point the guy didn't want to sell cars he just wanted to race cars yeah so i actually have a little bit of respect for ferrari just because he's like like i'm gonna put these race cars on the on the road put a little bit of luxury into them make a profit so i can go racing yeah 
All right, you're it's honest about, about it. Yeah. Like, I just want to raise cars. If I have to sell cars along the way, then I will. So we're going to do some shooting, but um, I was saying it's these events are kind of different, right? Especially when it's like a big open lot like this. Yeah. There's a lot of people around. Um, you want to like still be creative, right? Like enjoy it a little bit. So you're not just a car next to a whole bunch of cars, a car next to a whole bunch of cars. Um, so I always try to like integrate like some foreground elements, people walking through the shot with the focus on the car in the back just to like keep things interesting. Um, it does like when you're taking photography, especially versus videography, it gets like really exhausting just like trying to figure out like how am I gonna, how am I gonna like show this in a different way, yeah. right? Like you, you still wanna be able to like show something different or you know, have a couple shots that you get that are like, oh, that's sick, I'm glad like, I got up on top of that beam yeah. and like did it through the Made rafters, unique, yeah. right? Um, because it just like, it gives you something different like every single time you go out when you're, it's like, especially if you go like once a month to this event, getting a different shot eventually becomes really hard. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a cool challenge, right? It's a cool challenge, especially with the different, different types of cars and like the different setups for each day. You can usually find like one or two things that are like really cool that are different. So. I'm gonna try to do that really quick um, with a car that I like. So, all right. <laughs> we'll see. What car do you like? Um, what are you thinking? Like, what are your top? Give me your top three cars that oh, you like. Man, I guess visually I, too. <laughs> visually, so that they photograph well. Or man, I'm a I'm a big fan of. So it's tough because like each car has so many different specs, right? Like you can go in and go. Hey, I like this like purple. Actually, there's one uh, 488 Pista that's in purple with like white stripes on the front. Totally different. Ferrari. Right? Yes, Ferrari. Yeah. Um, standard, right? Like that car is absolutely gorgeous. A day like this, it's beautiful because you got all the white and then it's like that purple pops. But then like at sunset, right? You get like all different shades off of it. Um, so that's a fun car to shoot uh, that I really like. Um, 720 uh, Ferrari 720s is another one. Both Ferraris. There's just so many uh, uh, McLaren. Oh, McLaren 720s. Okay. Just because there's so many like little intricate. It's not like a super um, angular car where there's like all these different angles. Yeah. But it's just very. It, it looks like someone designed it in like a, like a water simulation. Whoa. Where there's like all these like cool. Um, cuts into it without looking like this jut for airflow. Okay. Right, so really clever design and really fun to shoot just because there's a lot of beautiful curves. Um, another one of my, I, I'm a huge fan of, I'm still a huge fan of Audi R8s. I don't know why, it's very, it's a very German design. Yeah, is it German? Just, it's just like functional, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> like, functional, yeah. it does the job nicely. <laughs> it's not super over there's not like a million things on it trying to stick out and be flashy but it's yeah. just like a great beautiful car um so i'd say those are my my top three um just as far as like what's fun to shoot just because it's almost like uh the r it's almost like architectural Ooh. you know like architectural photos yeah how they're just like very geometrically like i don't know just, i'll show you there's one over here that's beautiful Here's a 720S, right here. So you can see, like there is a ton, right? <laughs> Big headlight, the headlights are in here, right? Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's, so from the side, you can't really tell, but there's a gigantic intake in this, in, right in here. And you can see all the way in, there's cooling fans. Actually, if you look right here, you got coolers right in there and then it just all flows back so you can see it's just really really sleek so it makes it fun to shoot because you get all these different types of reflections off of it and you can you know capture it from another angle and be like oh that looks different than like any other shots that I took so it's a fun one to get now this is like what I was explaining where it's really hard to shoot like if you look at this line of cars it's really hard to shoot like really cool detail shots and different shots because every single shot you're going to take is from this angle behind front normally you take it from like if you wanted to get the whole car and the angle of the car you take it from right here but there's a lamborghini in the way 
right? So you can't like actually get the full car here. So you have to be really creative. So what is your, what's your camera setup and why do you yeah. choose to use that setup? So, and yeah, like that's... what focal length, which is like the, the like millimeter of lens you use in certain situations to capture cer certain shots and kind of all that. So I go completely different than, I'm totally different than most of the guys that I know that okay. do uh, videography. A lot of them use a prime lens, super fast. A lot of them use like a wide prime lens. I use a 28 to 70 to 2.8, so it's fine enough where you can get that blur in the background, um, really sharp. It's a fast enough lens even for a lot of like the low light stuff if you're not using like a filter. Um, and I can use that to get a wide range of shots, especially like in a crowded place like this. You don't want to have like 50 lens hang lenses hanging off of you, switching out lenses while they're on this rig. You want to just be able to do it fast. So run when and you gun. see something, you can just run and gun it, get the shots, and then you know take it back home and be like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes. so I use that 70 um, from further back just because it comes. So especially with cars, it will compress that that image. It won't like stretch that car out. There's a totally different look with this, like a 70 or like an 85 millimeter on a car than like a wide angle. Yeah. Um, do you want to make the car look more compressed? Do the lines look better or do, is the wide angle nice because then it kind of exaggerates things or what is like the look that you go if for? If you're trying to like capture a car with like stuff in the background, right? Like a landscape, um, basically like 50 and less is really good because you can capture that whole scene. It's more about the landscape that it's in. But if you're trying to capture like little details, a lot of times using the, the um, the 70 is really good just because you can really punch in, compress it, and, and get everything in that one shot. Also just from further back, like down low, 50, like when you're looking at a car, you see it at 50, right? Yeah. When you're like focused on a car from further away, you're kind of like stretching it down to 70 Interesting. in your mind. Yeah. So when you look at like a, a an image that's at like 70 or 85, that's kind of like what your mind does to something that you're seeing off in the distance. Right, so I always try to capture that by using the 70. A lot of guys use an 85 because it like further dream states that image, but it's really hard to capture that on video unless you're like using a Super steady stable. cam, yeah. using the, the Segway or the one wheel. Um, it's really hard to capture that, especially if you're walking around like, like this. Um, also in like tight spaces, an 85 is really hard because it's really far zoomed in. Yeah. So you'll get a ton of stuff in front of the image versus like one thing that kind of uses it as a frame. Um, the A lot of times I'll, I'll go out to like a 24 if I'm like getting a car that's like driving by just because, especially for me, I'm shooting a vertical right now, um, which helps for like uploading to social media. Um, but if you get it in 24, you can kind of still get the whole car yeah. without being super far back. So if you're here and a car's driving by like 10 feet away, you, you don't want it to just be like punched in on the side yeah. of the car. So um, I can easily, if I'm shooting this detail and the Koenigsegg, uh, Koenigsegg drives back, I can easily switch it down to 25 or 24 and run up and still be able to get it. Yeah, I think um, it's really profound that you choose to shoot vertically. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a different way to do it. I, I switch back and forth just depending on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm shooting a lot of big landscapes, I can shoot it wide and then just crop for social media. Um, I find that right now, like, I want to start uploading more to YouTube. YouTube now, now has a vertical. Yeah. Right? So you can actually fill up most of a screen in vertical on YouTube um, versus someone have to turn the camera uh, and then just upload your thumbnail separately. Yeah. Right? Take a picture, upload the thumbnail separately. Um, so I'm trying out vertical a little bit. I'm kind of switching back and forth. But what I find is I can still crop down to square on the vertical. So I just keep that in my mind. I always find it easier to, like if I have a subject, especially a car, center and frame, that car usually only takes up maybe 30% of the height, 25% of the height of that screen when I'm shooting, but it takes 100% of the width. Yeah. Right? So okay. it's really hard, especially with cars, to crop from wide to skinny and usually when someone has like if you look at IGTV as an example if you have someone that's cropped from wide to skinny and you're watching a car video usually it's like a part of the car right like otherwise you'd have to shoot it super super wide yeah. and then you're not getting that same focal length feel 
so, the dreamlike feel that you were exactly, talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm trying to like integrate both of those, be able to use it for as much stuff as possible, and I'm I'm finding that right now shooting vertically is helping, but I might switch back. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so. it's, yeah. That's just cool. I think that uh, within the industry as a whole, a lot like. So for example, I've done shoots with athletes before and I'll have a red camera or a GoPro or something that could like a, get a really good colored shot that looks really well made. And then they'll be like, can you just take it on my phone? <laughs> like seriously, like <laughs> iPhone like, clips. It. Just cause it's like film it. Well, they film each other too. Just vertically following each other. Uh, just cause it's right there, easy. They don't need me to like go color it. And then I become, yep. not I, but in general, it takes a lot longer to to like get that stuff done versus right. it's all about instantly like I'm in Mount right Hood then. I want to like say hey people I'm at Mount Hood this is what I'm doing right then versus yep. like getting it back two weeks later that's you know like with the, the more professional rigs not necessarily like reds that kind of thing you need special cards you need like oh my gosh. all this special equipment just to proprietary get equipment. to a state where you can edit it yeah right I think one of the biggest things that like is happening right now is it still working it's good. That's someone um, else's GoPro. I think <laughs> one of the biggest things that's happening right now is like Canon, right? Is starting to integrate like full sharing Wi-Fi into their into their pro cameras, um, like fully integrated for non-pro use, right? So like normally when you're like a sports photographer, right? You have a, a card, and either someone takes a card, or you have like a Wi-Fi chip that's just constantly sending that information. Streaming, yeah. Because they'll instantly upload that, and then be able to share it on like an online news source, right? Like, what's his name hit a home run? Like, five we want to see that. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how people get information. Um, so they're starting to make easier integration into like cell phones, where you can just share it instantly. Yeah. So that's like we're starting to get to the point where it's like, okay, the cell phone still is taking the most pictures and videos out of everything we're starting to get to the area where you can use the cell phone to share it but take actual professional video which is yeah. going to be huge for like that type of situation oh my gosh where it's like oh no let me send it to your phone and they're like oh what? oh yeah <laughs> it's like, so oh, easy sick. simple so you're telling me i can get full quality footage yeah. throw a little filter on on my app on my phone and have beautiful footage from high quality lens and camera right there in the moment that they can share. Yeah. So it's going to put a lot more value in you because it's like, hey, Crossing I have fingers. the gear. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, and, and you're skillful enough where like, there's still only so much stability that you can get with the cell phone. Yeah. Like, so you're going to have another level on top of that. So that's, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so, yeah. My next camera will that's be able exciting. to just instantly share. Really? So, oh yeah. For yeah. Sure. The next time I get a new camera body, I'm going to get it to the point where I can go, Hey, I'm sharing this right now, little video from an event. Yeah. So come find me if you're here. It's me, I'm here. <laughs> so have you had people um, that like know you or your Instagram like come talk to you? Yeah, so it's funny because a lot of times people come up, what's up man, what are you shooting? And yeah. I'm like, I'm just shooting this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, what's your name? I'm Jay, and I'll introduce myself and, and like, do you have an Instagram? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm Alpha Snap. And they're like, oh, you're Alpha Snap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people like recognize that that name. I've started to integrate like my own personal stuff a little bit more into that, so people like can. Uh, the whole point is like you want to be part of the community, and you want to be able to like share fun images, and then you know, from time to time you get paid for it. I'm not like trying to be the dude that goes and like does paid shoots all the time. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to. Um, so it's more for me like being able to like actually talk to people, hang out with people at these events. So I'm just integrating my own personal stuff into it so that happens more often. Yeah. And since I did that, a lot more people were like, what's up, Jay? Yeah. You know, and that's, that's so cool when you get to like talk to people who have the shared interest in like what you're doing. Yeah. And then they're also passionate about it too. And then you can have like a quality conversation. It's, right. It's kick ass. And it's, it's, I mean, it's cool when you can be like, this is 70 miles away from my house. Yeah. And this morning when I showed up at 7.30, first thing I saw was a dude that I shot something with. Really? Up in, like, Malibu. Yeah. Months ago. And he's like, what's up, dude? How you doing? <laughs> we just had a conversation. It's yeah. 7.30 in the morning. It was the first person I saw. So, I, I love that. That's, you know, at the end of the day, I don't, you can do a lot of things, but 10 years from now, it's the connections you make. Yeah. You know, the, maybe it's part of your portfolio down the road, right? Um, 
but at the end of the day, like the best portfolio is a group of friends that you met. The people, that, yeah. Yeah, that can go, hey, what's up, man? Hey, I'm, I'm doing this shoot. We need a guy who's actually reliable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> There's a lot of events that I've done because the previous person that they were working with, like, didn't give them the footage for like a month and a half. Like, they paid someone who like didn't deliver. And I do it for fun. So for me, I'm like, I'm gonna deliver it because thanks for paying me money to do it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, when I'm just literally just having as much fun as possible. So it's a little bit different. I, I take it a little different route. Yeah. I guess people that take it really, really seriously. So just yeah. to me. Well, did you want to look at that car that you were talking yeah. about? Yeah, I want to see this thing. Make sure that it is what I think it is first. So uh, how are you shooting this car? So, And what specifically about this car makes it like cool, attractive that you want to capture? So I guess one of the, the big things on this, like it's got, so when I look at it, the grills are really cool in the back here. So I want to make sure I capture that. That goes straight into McLaren logo. So maybe I can capture some of this grill and then get McLaren just to identify what the car is. This is the GT, so it's more of like a GT Cruiser. Um, the whole point of it is to be able to like take long drives, right? Um, you know, like for him, he's like Palm Springs, right? Shoot out there. Um, but what really is attractive about this one, one first, it's black and it's completely, it's a mirror, right? So there's a lot of little details here that really stand out. Um, one of the big things like with certain cars is gonna be this shoulder line here and then the just the haunch over the rear uh, the rear arch so I want to make sure I highlight that and if you look at it from like this angle right here you can see there's a ton of different cool lines here that I can capture I'm just trying to think out in my head like how do I capture in a way that shows all that detail but isn't like a cell phone image like you're walking by it right so I'm gonna try to think on this one a little bit look at it from a few different angles I for sure want to get these headlights just because they are so clean and simple. I think that would be a situation where I would take it from like further back versus wide um, just because I don't really want to stretch it too much. I probably want to compress it um, just to get as much detail on the headlights without like it being super wide in the screen. I like the front here. I think I would shoot that straight on. Right. If you look at it from here, it doesn't really have like the, I don't think it's meant to be viewed from the front. Or, or it's, I don't think it's meant to be viewed, viewed from this exact angle, probably further away this way where you're seeing just this side. And then if you look at it from the center, very, very geometrically um, similar. So I think from the front, this grill, from the angle we were at before the headlight, maybe a close-up of the decal on the front um, and then a shoulder and we'll get that mm. we'll get some in that door too so I'm just when I'm thinking through I'm, I'm trying to figure out like what are the details I really want to show that are really special about that car and then what angles are they best to actually show them from because believe it or not when they're designing cars they're looking at it from certain angles and they're trying to make it look a certain way from the different angles that you actually view the car from Let's move for this sick Carrera. Look at this thing. I identify with... <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Everything stops for the air-cooled Porsche. This is actually a, a scenario where I wish I had a skateboard right now. Because I could just really smoothly come in straight and get a nice rolling shot here. And then I would probably actually scoot way back here to get one from the distance and use these cars as framing. And just a clean moving shot so I can get everything else in the background. But I'm gonna try to do that just by keeping my feet really, really smooth, we'll see. Just gonna try to take as many of these, these little rolling shots as possible in different, different angles so that when I get back to the computer, I can go, oh, okay, that one looks good and it works with this next shot. So I'll take a different, a couple different types of shots. It's not all about like the car too. <laughs> like a lot of times the best clips in a lot of these car videos are the, the kids' reactions 
to the cars when they're driving. That is me. awesome. Right? So <laughs> it'll be like, cool car, cool car, and then it'll be like a kid like <laughs> in slow motion. So I try to, like, it's always good to get the people, right? It's all about the community. All about the people. So a lot of times when you see a guy who's like just loving that car, it's cool to just be able to work some of that stuff in. Get the reaction and the emotion in with uh, the visual appeal. Exactly. Yeah, so that's when you're out. trying to like create an emotion from from that video, right? What better than to show like the emotion on screen that you're trying to? Create? Yeah, that's that's great. So, Another thing I never thought about. Yeah. So when you're when you're checking your shots, what are you looking for? I'm just checking to make sure like one, it's exposing correctly. The other thing is just like make sure like really quick that okay. It's capturing what I want to capture. There's no like big jolts in it, right? Like shifting it. Um, and that, like, right now, if I want to take a video of like the headlights, right? If I'm at 70, I think I know what it looks like in my head, but it's always good to check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to check. You never know. You don't want to like be constantly sitting there looking at your camera the whole time, but it is good from time to time to be like, okay, everything's good, right? All right, good move forward yeah so, yeah that's all i was telling him like so normally it's like run and gun action shots yeah. on events especially like yeah. you get like one chance best part about here is yeah. everyone's just kind of yeah, hanging can, out yeah, everyone's great. chill you do what you need to do get it done take a couple takes yep right so during the week then what's what's the day job on the advertising side yeah so um i work with uh, smaller dealerships okay. doing uh, social media, like targeted advertising, that kind of Got stuff. Um, sometimes eyeballs. off social media, OTT, yeah. okay. a lot of analytics. And so like 90% of the time that I actually spent, so I sell that right yeah. to dealerships, but 90% of the time that I actually spend is like going through analytics data mm -hmm. with them, the different platforms that they're using. What, what platforms are you aware of that they use? Um, so there's, there's a lot. I, no, I know. Facebook, what Instagram. Okay. Snap, okay. TikTok, all the social There's stuff. All also, uh, what's your name? Darren. Darren. I'm Max. Max. Nice right to meet on. you. Yeah. Jay. Right on. Nice Here, to meet I'll, you. I'll, I'll get that a pic, awesome. so I'll send it so I don't ever forget because I always forget who the boys are. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, like in content creation, on social media. I think we're like kind of like in this zone where everyone's trying to like figure out like. What is going yeah, on? Yeah, how to how to figure out what the whole happened scheme? to like quality content creation? <laughs> like, you know, there's a lot like most like we were talking about earlier. Like most of it's taken on cell phone, like on the app. Yeah, right. Like a lot of like video that it's like just kind of sitting there on a tripod, um, and then like a lot of businesses trying to figure out like advertising and how like can they advertise and actually like use social media to be social. Yeah. Right? Like that's the biggest thing for me like right now is like use social media to be social and just like have a good time with it. On the business side, it seems to be like the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, but then like professionally, like one of the biggest things I see is like there's a lot of businesses that don't understand social media so they just trust another business. And what they end up doing is like just wasting a ton of money that could be going to their business. They just by don't spending have, it on, just they're by like spending it yeah. on ads through another company that isn't like being transparent with how they're spending those ads and not really connecting to their customers. So instead of like spending the money and time by just actually connecting to the customers, they're just trusting another business without it, without without like spending time to actually learn it or have that company. I think most companies are afraid to teach their clients how it works because they're afraid of losing business okay. versus the other way around, which you should be teaching that company how to use it. Or you're going to lose, yeah. Or you're going to lose business because that person's not going to be profitable. Like I always think about it like from a small business standpoint, there's like an owner who's like putting their blood, sweat and tears into it. Yeah. And they like, if you give them the tools to learn and how to report, if you are truly providing them like value, right? Hey, we're connecting to your customers and this is how our ads are performing and this is how they work. Here's how the reporting works so you can look at it at any time. That's actually bringing a business value. They're gonna be able to make a profit, connect with people, do a lot more than they would have previously and that will grow your business. That's the way I look at it. And I think there's too many companies out there right now that are like, here's our reporting platform and like, not really giving them much value through it. So that's a lot of the stuff that I've been learning on the side, um, on top of what I do on a work basis. Yeah. I'm shooting 
videos and all that kind of stuff that I think is super important. Um, I just, whatever the future is for like content creation, continue to like actually spend the time to learn, not just the content side, but like how everything works on the back end from a business standpoint. If you're working for businesses, how that's actually benefiting them and show them how it's benefiting them through stuff that they can use on their own. So I don't know whether that's valuable or not to anyone listening. No, I think it I, is. I think just if you spend more time connecting with people and you spend more time providing as much value as possible for businesses, then you're gonna you're probably gonna see something out of it long term. Yeah. Maybe not short term, but long term. So true. That's yeah, that's all I had to share. Any uh, any last words for the people out there? And thank you for showing me yeah. your your craft. <laughs> and it's very it's so unique. Like I like I don't know a lot of people that do what you do. And I'm just stoked to have met you. Yeah. On a random situation. I'm so glad. Like, and like, here we are now, and you're telling your story and like showing us what you do. So that's yeah. kick ass. I think, uh, like, last words for everyone: just continue to have fun, keep learning, and um, I mean, don't focus too much on like. I, I'd say focus more on like actually. If you followed less people on social media and you actually commented and talk to those people, it's probably gonna be healthier. I think right now, especially with everything that everyone's going through, if you actually found the time to comment on every single post that you see that you enjoy, instead of just scrolling and liking and worrying about how many likes you get on something, just make what you love and then have a conversation with people that make stuff that you like too. Yeah. I think that's my, my parting words of wisdom. That's so that's smart. That's my dad advice for everyone out yeah. there. Yeah, um, so follow, follow, 50 people instead of 2,000, but then yeah. the 50 people you follow, you're really into what they do, you're excited to see what they do in the future, and then you want to be involved with them. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's great, yeah. It's building more connections instead of just like trying to build a following. And I think like that's, especially like, I don't know, every platform kind of fluctuates, but you guys notice like, there's probably less like true engagement on social media right now, I think, just looking at it. And I think that's just because people are less, less engaging, right? They're deciding to engage less just because the habits that they've kind of developed on platforms. Yeah. So focus less on the platform and just focus on having a good time and meeting people, I think. I like that. And then you'll end up just meeting a random dude on an airplane on the way to Aspen. And, having a and then now we're, we're, now we're looking at cars, having a good time. I know. Hell we yeah. gotta, um, Next time I go to like a really cool event or like drive or something, yeah, or get connected, then we should link up again. Let's Especially do it. if it's down here, yeah, It'd be awesome. Hell yeah! Well, thanks so much, Jay. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Peace out. Bye. Bye.